Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the penultimate episode of Bonfire for the Lost in association with Vancouver by Night, who are very happy to be on their channel, be doing this wonderful story with these wonderful people. Uh, I am Petra Skelton. I am your storyteller for this evening. And joining me are a team of absolutely wonderful creative professionals. And we're going to go down the list. I will call your name, tell everybody who you are, um, your pronouns, and who you're playing. And then we'll move on from there. So starting with Danny. Hi, I'm Danny, or Danny's Corner. Today we'll be playing Aotunde, our Malkavian. My pronouns are she, they, and Aotunde's pronouns are they, them. The cleanest I've ever done that. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse. Hi, everybody. My name is Jesse, he, him pronouns, and I'm playing Police the Thin Blood, who is having a time of their life. One could only imagine why. <laughs> Aubrey. Hello, I am Aubrey, and I am playing Morgan the Lissambra, and we both use she, her. And last but certainly not least, B. Oh, you're muted. Still muted. Oh, okay. Uh, this is sound? Yes, it is. Cool. There we go. Hello. I, everybody was doing so well, and I had to break the flow. Peace <laughs> all day here. <laughs> they, them pronouns. I'm playing Adze. Um, they are a Malkavian um, ragamuffin. Uh, also, they, them pronouns. Okie dokie. Well, with everybody introduced, we can get into it. But before... We get into the meat of this penultimate episode before absolutely everything falls apart around our wonderful characters. I have to introduce our sponsors. So let's go through the list. Let's see if I can do it in one breath this time. I'm joking. I'm not going to do that. Uh, so first first and foremost, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Mikhail Ortoria of Ortoria Designs, who creates beautiful dice boxes. Please visit him on Instagram. The link is in the chat. Illuminagents is a comedy web series that weaves real conspiracy theories into its sci-fi short-form episodes. Shot in Toronto, this indie production will leave you laughing and questioning reality at the same time. Watch season one, which includes the musical finale episode for free on Sika.tv. Orc.Style is a adults-only fantasy fetish fashion brand for all of you orc-loving monster huggers out there. Orc-style shirts, underwear, and accessories are sure to drop your intelligence and increase your confidence by 10 points. Uh, they've also just released their Chompers Orc Tusks. They're perfect for cosplay, roleplay, and streaming. Uh, yeah, the wonderful folks. Martlet Games is a collective of tabletop RPG veterans ready to work for you, from tabletop RPG development to actual play production. They've contributed to various storyteller vault titles, sponsored channels like us, to keep the world of darkness a haven for those with stories to tell. Visit their link in the chat to explore their world. They can help you create yours. They're wonderfully inclusive, great people to work with. Roll for Adventure. Adventure Dice is your Canadian source for dice, role-playing game accessories, and other tabletop gaming goodies. Many of the items on our site are handcrafted in beautiful British Columbia, Canada. I know that place. And <laughs> last but very not least is Demiplane. Demiplane is a VTT that uh, kind of allows for access to easy access to all of your books. It features games such as Avatar Legends. Um, Vampire the Masquerade, Hunter, uh, I would anticipate a Werewolf. They're doing all of them, and it's, it makes everything more concise, easy to read, a uh, great place to read your books and have them accessible for games. If you could only see the tabs I have open, um, but that would spoil things, so we're not going to go into that. So, where last we left off, I find myself with a foggy mind and can't quite remember how we left off. Does anybody want to remind the class where we ended, how and how we got there last session? Um, I can, I'll, I'll try. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Um, so last time 
on not Dragon Ball Z, um, on this, um, we started off in a room. I wait, no, that's not where we started off. No, we just left, um, a room. We just escaped a room that had a big shadowy, uh, monster guy who might have been a friend. We don't know. They seem friend shaped, but we did run away in time, um, before we could find out. Um, we're about to get the door open and we started going up more of the steps until we got stopped by another wall of spikes uh yeah that works uh and so we went into another room where there was a bunch of candles in the middle of the room and then everybody except for ao tundus are walking towards it i've if they saw an old friend which is bad because we're vampires and mm. the candles were very lit um and Ayotunde was able to essentially tackle Kalisa away, but um, Adzi and Morgan got very close to the candles before being able to snap out of it just before touching them. Um, and there was some little sort of recomposure of ourselves, getting ourselves back together before we continued on. Um, but as we were about to continue on, there was just a kid just, just, just just the person just sort of there and asking what we saw and uh, talking about how their group was on the upper floor and planning that we should follow them and so we did um and they also talked about how there was a group of people we should not do weird stuff around um and we very quickly learned what that meant as we went into the room and saw a bunch of hunters humans surrounding what seemed to be a lupine <laughs> i believe creature that was just laying, laying, laying on the ground luckily it was totally for sure it's so long dead so it's totally fine uh-oh <laughs> <laughs> it then started moving though oh dear it's moving now and that's where we are in this day and age man i didn't remember any of that that genuinely feels like a bad situation for that you all got yourself in without any involvement by me yeah you know, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah 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 that yeah. that's we were all the there tracks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay so uh as we resume into this moment where all of you are staring down this vast thing that's rising made of shadow bone and based on its eye blood you all have an inherent reaction only to realize you're in that room with the hunters standing around the bones the circle still drawn on the floor around it but nothing has moved but you've all reacted accordingly. So going down the list, uh, I'm going to ask you how you reacted to this. Um, and we can have these hunters react accordingly. So uh, we're, you know what? We'll make this a little better. Willpower rolls for the entire table. Let's see all how right. you did. Funky. And this isn't mental manipulation. No, it is not. Okay. I promise you it is not mental manipulation. I just wanted to know because there's a I get plus two bonus dice if it is mental manipulation. Ah. Yeah. Three. Okay. Cool. So this is gonna be one of those ones where you want to get minimum two successes. Oh. Okay. So three and three so far. Cool. Right, we're gonna play again. I got it. We are rolling. Okay. Oh, so, um, one success, and it was a ten. Okay. And Jesse. Oh, okay. Oh. Cool. <laughs> wow. So, so, most of you don't react. You managed to hold that reaction back. Police is stone. There's no reaction I'm imagining, right? Um, why would no. I? Why would I be worried if I know that their strings end at this floor? 
Fair enough. Oh. <laughs> Adze, uh, this is the most real thing you've seen in a while. It's yeah. pure fear instinct grabs you. And in this moment, you uh, not even reacting like a vampire, which normally I would imagine you'd go invisible. Yeah. In this instance, partially maybe because of that increased humanity from last session, you react like a scared human. You throw yourself backwards into the wall very suddenly. And the hunters that are gathered around this corpse in the room kind of like look up. They're like, they okay? No! <laughs> Never seen someone fall into a wall before? What's up? I, I don't know. You just jump like you saw a ghost. Weird. You probably did. I mean, this place is very creepy. Yeah, I mean... Oh, wait, are you guys freaked out about this thing? Yes! What are you doing? Oh, well, we, we dragged it up here. Why? This is cursed. The associations with the moon. It is all bad. I'm going to reiterate, is your friend okay? It's been a long night. Yeah. You came because of banners, right? Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, no, we brought this up here because, you know, we're going to see if we can do that little, that ritual that um, we dug up. Um, it's supposed to bring this thing, whatever it is, back to life. And we'll get to, uh, maybe we can whip it out at whatever, whoever we're trying to deal with upstairs. Um, what was what was their name? Uh, Argust? Argentum. Yeah, that seems right. That seems right. August? August, August. is a weird name. Oh, August. August. That makes more sense. That makes more sense. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna start this ritual soon. Um do any of you have experienced rituals or anything? No. No? Okay. Mm -mm. I'm the muscle. So they kind of look at you. You're not, you don't look like the, like you look tough, but mm. physically, size-wise, how tall and intimidating I, is Morgan? I mean, Morgan is is on the shorter side with, even with her boots. She's like 5'4", five, 5'5", five, five with the boots. Okay, so I'm going to roll for this person to see if they take you seriously or if they interpret this as a joke. I don't think any of us break 5'6". <laughs> <laughs> short crew represent short crew so this person looks up at you when you say that and they go <laughs> yeah right nice uh, can I cast use premonitions you sure can <laughs> shake your head at me nothing bad can happen do it do it do it do it uh, your actions right, will so never have consequences look. I right. only know the truth about one thing. <laughs> Their night's not going to end well. <laughs> so I really am just, this is, this is both me and Khalees at the same time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going <laughs> to stop any of this from happening because I know the truth. Oh yeah. No, I get you. I know the truth. And Khalees is also just smiling in this weird way. <laughs> Oh no! So, I feel like like he's got a lot going on too. I can't remember what happened the exact thing last session, but you you're hungry, or there was something a little. You did. I remember. If I remember correctly. Kalise is at like hunger three at least. <laughs> what? Huh. Huh. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, Kalise is at hunger three, but Kalise also knows like so has made so many judgment calls in like a single second and <laughs> and is just bemused by the speed in which he made that decision you know what i mean yeah. and so whatever is going on here doesn't matter because we got we got more important things to go so i'm just gonna let it ride i'm just gonna let fate decide and not interrupt anything 
but not help either. Mm. I'm just laughing uh, at the at the fact that it's happening. This is uh, all a very healthy way of addressing this. Exactly. <laughs> okay, what'd you get? If I understand, I'm just rolling the uh, two dots in my off specs, correct? Uh, I think, is it, isn't it just a rouse check for premonitions? Mm. Or, I think it really depends on what kind of premonition... Because it can either be a thing that you, the the storyteller puts on a person, just being like, you have a premonition, or a thing that they roll for. It's like wits aspects, I think, but it is also involves a rouse check if they do it. Um, they decide to do it on their own. Okay, so yeah, wits. Uh, let's do wits and aspects, and uh, yeah, also a rouse check. So one after the other. Okay. I only know that because I I played a character that used premonition all the time, so I, I eventually remembered <laughs> it. it. It also says that the number of successes rolled determines the level of insight on the subject, if Ooh. any. All right, we got three successes. Okay. Um, I didn't roll a hundred dice there, should I? Or would that be, uh, you know what, it's fine. Yes. Don't worry about that. I yes. should, okay. Yeah, just just roll a, a hundred die now. You're good. And then we, we'll get you to do the rouse check after that. Hunger die is an eight. We're okay. Okay. So that's another success then. And so oh, successes. And that oh, uh, a five on my rouse. Wait, is a rouse a d6 or a d10? D10. D10. Okay. Yeah, that's a five. Oops. Yep. So you're going to get hungrier as a result of this. Uh... Um, <laughs> but Maybe. so what subject is this premonition specifically about? I, I have mean... an inkling, but I need if to do any. Know. It says, if any, you could pick somebody else. You don't have to pick me. Don't pick me. <laughs> You're going to be really sad if you pick me. I, oh, like a premonition of there's a couple of um, intense powers at play, Kalise among them, the, the Lupine, and then Augustine or whatever their name is. Um, these are kind of my current fears at the moment. My... My um, my sense of dread is, you know, ringing out the alarm bells due to those three. <laughs> okay. So how would you like to do it? Let's divide those points, those successes you've got. you got four successes total, mm -hmm. and you just named three subjects, Khalees, August, and the mm -hmm. Lupine. Would you like to do one each and give you a little bit for each? And then you'll have one additional that you can ask for whichever one piques your interest. Yeah, I would love okay. that. Thank you. So how does... Actually, I... okay, I have a thing. So you reach into yourself. You reach internally. You can feel your blood almost bubble for a moment. It... It's an uncomfortable notion that shivers down your spine. But as you look to Khalees, you have to immediately pull away. It's your eyes. It's like you just stared into a flashlight. You just wince immediately, just, ah! Mm -hmm. And this brings your eyes downwards where you see the lupine. And you see this thing, you see an ancient fear of your own, which is the moon. But when you see it in this instance, it's not a frightful thing. It's not a red moon. It's not something where it's an oppressive force. It's bleeding, like something has wounded it. Huh. This leads you to look upwards towards where the actual moon would be, connecting you to this idea of August. This individual you've never met, whose voice you've only heard once. When you look, you don't see a man. You see the absence of one. Where would you like to put your final success? The bleeding moon. Okay, so the lupine a lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm 
you see this, you look at it and you see bones. You, it was just bones before it's bones now. You've seen the bleeding moon. But in this instance, when you look at it, you actually double over sobbing. Ah. It's a sudden wave of sadness just wrenches into you. Because, and you don't know where this thought comes from. All you can think is, these bones are incomplete. And that's what you get. Cool. I'm sobbing on the floor. Just having <laughs> a little, in a little ball <laughs> shape. <laughs> so your friend, um, who already reacted very weird in front of uh, everybody, maybe normally to a giant <laughs> pile of wolf bones, um, still suddenly like like a, an ecstatic at a uh, at worship, basically just like drops down and starts sobbing. Um, gonna... I don't deal well with emotions. <laughs> uh, oh, so no. it's kind of like fade back into the crowd for a bit. Uh, is that, a... Is that gonna... a crowd here? <laughs> it's oh, in a is... shadow crowd. Mm. In the hallway, there's a bunch of hunters, so Morgan could have just like, oh, stepped okay. back into there. Yeah, I'm just being like... Morgan, you wear combat boots, you have frizzy red hair, and you wear flannel. <laughs> yeah, you really out. think cool. that you blend in with this in crowd of crowd. hunters? <laughs> <laughs> um, Eosende will immediately, like, the second as it like, goes on the ground, they like do like a quick glance over to see what everybody else is doing first to see if like the other hunters who are like hey what's up with that person and are they staring again um great uh and he drops to the ground with them and like okay. immediately like wraps them in a hug and they're sort of just like it's okay i understand i know and then they're gonna Ooh. you understand i understand yeah you have seen the moon that bleeds yeah. And this this abomination that's incomplete. It it's uh it's hurting. Oh we did not think you would be so kind. And I'm gonna like blow my nose. If I do that, I don't know. I feel like vampires probably don't, but I'll make the sound effect on <laughs> your shirt. It's okay. I didn't see it's just like patting your back. And if the hunters are still staring, they just like look at them and they're just gonna be like, see, now you're hurting their feelings. This you know how hard it is to do a ritual when you've already ruined the vibes around it now? I honestly had not considered the vibes. I can give you that. <laughs> well, I, I that's not... why we haven't done it yet. Now we have to wait. Okay, you know, like, I, I mean, no offense about this, but like, if, you, if you're being triggered by the the bones, like, you can leave the room. It's what? safe no. to leave the room. Like, that, no, we cannot. Fine. No. Okay. Uh... Just give it a second or else something's going to go wrong. Okay, give it a second. I'll give it a second. As that's happening... <laughs> I love it. Everybody assumes I'm going to do something horrible. Uh, I, I just don't trust this. As, as it doesn't that... matter. I'm laughing. Khalees is laughing. Khalees is just chuckling to themselves. And it's getting increasingly more and more like louder because oh, no. I can't. He can't help himself. I don't care. He just can't help himself. This is hilarious. Uh, it's funny that you mentioned that because at that moment, um, the figure who in your notes you titled sneakers wraps you on the shoulder and goes like motions for you to follow them into the hallway as this whole thing is happening sure yeah okay they lead you back to the stairwell do you follow mm -hmm. cool open the they like just walk through the door and if you follow they're just kind of in 
the hallway, it, like in the uh, that area that's just dark now because you guys shattered the light, but the has the faint candlelight of the paintings. Um, they're just kind of smoking a cigarette and they go fucked up right it's not fair for them <laughs> fair no what's fairness in this moment it's not fair that i know and they don't yeah um you know what's coming that and beyond you know it'll be war right does it matter well it won't matter much to us, but it'll matter, well, some of us. It'll matter to those that are left. You, uh, a lot of us get ready for the end, thinking about the idea of being ready for it. You thought about what you're going to do after? It doesn't matter because you'll all be all right. Okay. And they kind of like lean close to you for a moment. Just like, I'm glad you came tonight. I didn't have a choice. No. Everyone always has one of those. You just made the right one. Can I leave these mooks to you? I don't know. Which do you think is more fucked up? It's a good question. You're welcome. And they kind of just like finish the cigarette, toss it out on the ground, and they move to leave to like start walking down the stairwell. Yeah, I'll let them go. Okay, cool. As they leave, as you're watching them leave, I'm going to get you to do a wits and composure roll. Okay. Um... Where is my character sheet to tell me what terrible things I'm going to do? Com with composure? Yes, indeed. All right, we're fine. We're fine, guys. We're fine. We're fine. That's uh, six. Um, um, two. Two. So that's more than enough. See, this wasn't a test to see how Khalees would react, because I'm not going to tell you that. You, you'll know that. This is more a test to see if you're able to watch it happen. But as they walk down that stairwell, cigarette out of their hand they start flicking open their lighter and they literally just <clears throat> light themselves up and keep walking down the stairs until you can't see them anymore you don't see them collapse and then they're out of your sight I don't, I don't know what's happening right now, guys. I earnestly don't. But I know what Khalees is going to do. Uh, Khalees is going to go up 
back up the stairs and open the door and close it behind him. Okay. So that he's with the rest of the group. Okay. So Morgan is in the hallway. Yeah. Adze and Dan and uh, Ayutande are still in the room with the bones. So you where police is is in the hallway or in the room? Um, I would be in the hallway probably. I was like, emotions make me uncomfortable. It's been a while since I've really dealt with them. So it's, I'm going to let them feel their thing and not hover. While you're in the, while police is out of the room, just mm -hmm. before they come back in, you're amongst hunters and it feels kind of weird to be around this many people at first. Mm -hmm. Um, can I get you to roll wits and awareness for me? Sure. What am I? Uh, it'd be three successes. Three successes. Okay, so as you're kind of watching, you see it's people watching as a vampire is a very typical hobby. Mm -hmm. um, it's especially when it's difficult to have when you get older and it's difficult to have those connections you used to have. But maybe it's that little bit of humanity that sparked back in you, or maybe it's grief, whatever you want to call it. But you hear a group of hunters that are sharing a couple beers, laughing. And you see them all laughing and all that. And for a second, you see Felix and Nessa standing together, kind of like one their arm around the other while they're inside the group. The image is gone as soon as it hits you but now it's just two hunters you don't know it's uh, that feeling of seeing them again and it's a conflicting feeling it's maybe i pushed them out of my mind for a long time too painful to remember conflicting feeling of missing them and remembering what happened remembering how I was made it's very probably conflicted look as I just sort of stand there like leaning against the wall uh, maybe I pulled out my knife and kind of just using it to like pick at my fingers slightly just to do something so I don't just stand there like something that doesn't feel emotion and stare. At least try to pretend maybe it is the last little bit of humanity I've regained that means I at least trying to act like it. Yeah. It's at that moment as you're leaning there doing that, that Khalees comes into the hall, comes back into the hallway closes the door behind him. When he does that, it feels like the room is an island. For a moment, it takes you like only a second, and I'm not gonna get you to roll for this. If this mm -hmm. any other character was noticing this, I get them to roll. Considering your background, considering how you know August, no, mm -hmm. not going to do a roll. The moment that door is closed, this room feels divided from everything else, that it's going to be a fight to get out of here. And, well, Morgan remembers what a kill room is. It's probably an immediate change in my demeanor as you do that. 
I'm going to look at you and I just go, we can't stay here. And that's to Khalees, right? Yeah, that is to Khalees. Say, we can't stay here. So you just want to leave them to their kill room fate? There's nothing we can do. The only way to do anything is to kill the bastard at the top. And if we get to him first, we have a better shot than they do. Is it just me and Morgan, or is it me, Morgan, Adze, and Ayatunde? Adze and Ayatunde are still in the room with the bones. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, yeah, so mm-hmm. it's just you two. We have to go inside. There's that moment of knowing that yeah, we do. And knowing exactly what we'll find, sort of the closing of the eyes and gritting of the teeth and just being like, it's gonna be a bloodbath. Come on, Morgan, look at you. You're wearing ass-kicking boots. Surely you wouldn't be wearing those if you weren't planning to kick some ass. Yeah. No. Very one specific ass that I want to kick. Then wouldn't it be wonderful if you kicked everyone's ass? before you kicked his, get it nice and dirty. So that way, when you imprint your ass-kicking boot print to his ashened form, you will leave a mark from his death to the end. Someone in the background as that's happening. All, all they heard was the ass kicking boot moment, and they're like, "What? Kick it out!" And they're like, "Okay, Greg, you've had you've had enough." And Kalise will start moving forward. Come on, Morgan, it's time to kick some ass. As I move forward and stand up from the wall. I would like to manifest the arms of Ahriman. Okie dokie. Yep. So uh, is, is that's a rouse check, right? Yes, that is a rouse <laughs> check. I always ask because some of the like Zemisi stuff mm-hmm. that's higher level for some reason doesn't require one and it always weirds me out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I do not get hungrier. Nice. So I imagine for Morgan, this is as easy as like flexing a muscle. This yeah. isn't this isn't something you have to drag up from the well of your being. The, the, these are your limbs. What does this look like to the assembled people in the hallway? As Morgan stands up, sort of does the thing stretches her shoulders and puts her hands out the her shadow melts uh completely and you just watch as it climbs the walls around sort of just filling and becoming overwhelming and almost reaching out with the hands of the dead just a million tendrils reaching out okay so i'm gonna roll f- to see if everybody notices this because people are paying attention to a different thing um Greg is drunk right now we even see this so funny thing oh no 
They don't notice shit. <laughs> Nobody noticed. Yeah, Greg. I just rolled six dice. No successes. <laughs> so, as you begin striding forward, oblivionic, oblivionic, <laughs> shadowy arms reaching forward, these hunters, these kind, these prey, stay blissfully unaware as you walk towards them. Every bit the killer he turned you into. And that's where we're going to take a break, everybody. <laughs> we will be back uh, in just a little bit. Uh, enjoy your break. Get yourself some water. Do a human break. Get ready for a good old-fashioned hallway fight, albeit probably with some weird powers. Uh, we'll see you in a little bit. Mm -hmm. See you soon, guys. Hello and welcome back, everybody. It's great to see you. Great to be here. And uh, before we get back into it, uh, I should just mention that lines and veils are an important part of gameplay, and there's something that we've incorporated into this as safety tools. Um, everybody here has been reminded of them before going into this session today, just to make sure that we're all on the same page, and I've given them content warnings about things that we might be treading close to as a result of the context of this session. Now, with that context, and to extend those safety tools to you, the viewer, I would like to encourage you, if at any point you begin to feel uncomfortable, or it feels like what's happening on screen is a little too real or too upsetting, I encourage you to step away. Just for a little bit, just to get give yourself a break. There will be a VOD if you want to check it out and kind of skip around. More than more than reasonable. Your health comes a hundred percent before our entertainment, and just want to make sure that everybody watching understands that. With that said, let's get back to the hallway fight that's about to happen, where Morgan is going to be our old boy surrogate. And instead of using a hammer, is going to use hands made of abyssal magics. Um, so <laughs> let's. Is let's... that how you're supposed to say it? I don't know. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, sorry. Got to get back. So, Morgan, to set the scene, Morgan striding down the hallway, her shadow above her arms and tendrils of shadow roiling out of them like wisps of smoke turned solid police following closely behind or a little ways behind i'm imagining a uh, little ways behind this is uh this is morgan's show after all okay and ayotande and adze unaware of what's about to happen, huddled in the room with a lupine corpse. So we're going to go straight to Morgan. What would you like to do? There is a approximately, I would say, five to ten hunters in this hallway. They have not somehow, despite me rolling six dice, they have not noticed mm. your terrifying arms. Well... I am how are they how are they bunched up is the big question. Good question. So there's the mm. group that was crushing them beers uh just over to the to the right side of the hallway, mm. a little closer to the door, um, that is currently a little bit barricaded. So it's not like they're racing out of there. And then there's a group slightly closer to the door of the room where Adze and Ayotunde are. And you also know there are about three or four in that room as well. Well, I am going to just to start things off. I'm going to grab the closest one with these shadows, pick him up, and toss him across the hallway. Make okay. a statement. Okie dokie. Uh, does this mm. require a roll from you? 
Uh, yes, it is a um, it's a contested role. It is it is my wits and oblivion versus their resolve composure. Okay. Um, I will roll. See. You have to be two. Two? Cool. Two. Five. Oh, um, and I also have prowess, um, which I think is arouse, which I should probably do first. Okay. Uh, so I will, I will roll for to rouse for prowess. Um, and I am fine with, I'm fine. I got a seven on the dice. Uh, and that adds half of my potence rating to like attacks and stuff. Cool. Uh, the full potence rating for melee attacks, which I don't know if arms of Ironmon counted as a melee attack. Um, or if for, uh, or no, for unarmed attacks, it's full potence. For uh, melee attacks, it's half. Okay. Yeah. I would count this as melee, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I, it's, we're starting off with just three. Just okay, three well, successes. that's still more than enough. But I'm going to say, as a result of it just beating it, mm -hmm. this person becomes aware as this tendril. Where mm -hmm. Does it wrap around their midsection, would you say? Yeah. Okay, so as this tendril wraps around them, they become aware of it, and they're like, what the? Ah, ah, and they grab at it at their midsection and try and rest it only to get flung down the hallway. Now, I'm going to roll a chance die. Mm -hmm just to see where this body lands. Let's see if you get to pull off a cannonball run here. Through the door. <laughs> so, this body flies in the direction of the group of beer drinking, uh, I was about to call them good old boys, but I mean, that's usually a, a decent joke about hunters, but they, the body falls a little short, instead crumpling to the ground in front of them as this person screaming the entire time, just <gasps> hits the ground, tumbles, and they all turn to see the calamity that is Morgan. A bunch of them all reach for weapons, and we're gonna call that full combat at this point. So the only people that are not involved in this combat at this point are Ayutande and Anze. And after this first round of combat, you probably will be in your own because uh, people will hear what's happening, but you can't see it because the door mm. is currently closed. So uh, let's determine the order of things. Um, so we'll get... Okay. I've got one nimble hunter, and that's about it. So I'm going to give one hunter a reaction, and then I'm going to pass it to Kalise, and then we'll go, we'll basically go the order of uh, Morgan, Kalise, hunters, so on and so forth. Um, one hunter reaches for a weapon, pulls something out. It's just a pistol. Mm. And they aim and fire down the hallway at you. This person is panicked, clearly worried. Um, or perhaps they think that the shadow is the real threat because they shoot at the shadow. They don't shoot at you. And as a result, the bullet just uselessly it's shadow, mm. bites shadow and concrete, and nothing else happens. Um, a bunch of the rest of them are scrambling for their weapons, but Khalees, you have a moment. I think that like one guy uh, shot upward towards like one of the shadows or whatever. Um, and I imagine that Morgan is just still moving forward, like maybe just not even caring. And Khalees will um will walk as calmly as Morgan is, mm -hmm. just 
a distance away. And if they pass the one guy that shot the bullet, they're just going to say, it's probably best if you end it now. Wow. Is there going to be anything coupled with that? Or are you just suggesting? Nope, just suggesting. Okay. So that happens. And this person just, because they only have a few seconds to react here. They're like, what? And then we're going to jump to the room with Adze and Ayutunde. Because in this room, what you hear is, <laughs> Holy shit! And then a gunshot. And the hunters in the room with you are all go all like immediately jerk over to the what what the hell's happening? And they all start reaching for weapons and moving towards the door. They're not going after you two, but they're just going for the door to try and find out what's happening. What do y'all do? I mean, I'm gonna turn invisible. <laughs> <laughs> This is really? an uncomfortable you? situation. <laughs> I need the upper hand here. Hey, they're cuddling still. They're still hugging because this is all happening simultaneously, yeah, you know? That's true. <laughs> that isn't you know untrue. You're allowed to go invisible in our hug. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, you, can tell, you know I'm there. It's just, I know uh... you're there. I know you're there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a defense mechanism, so I have to do a rouse check, I believe, for that one. Yes, indeed. Fail. It's a fire. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> what does that mean again? So you're going to get hungrier. Oh, dang. Yeah. Power still happens. You just get hungrier. So that brings you up to hunger three. three now. That's two of you at hunger three at this point. Yay. That is. Look, there's a lot of meals all over the place. You're yeah, not you know wanting what? to eat. This is a beneficial situation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, Okay, so you turn invisible, and luck. I, I, I'm gonna roll just to make sure they they know they don't notice or not because they aren't focused on you at this point. Yeah, um, and it's it's difficult to, if you're not watching someone to notice them turning invisible, right? <laughs> Although, it's like Ayutanda is just anyway. like holding like a <laughs> wide <laughs> shape, you know. Neither of them notice. Love it. They both are too focused on the on the matter at hand. You notice that when one of them draws their weapon, it's not a pistol. It's like an MP5, like a submachine gun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they're, they're just holding at the ready. This person who now is like approaching the door with this gun, the other person's moving like someone who's freaked out, scared. This mm -hmm. person's reactions, they're explicitly military. Um, okay, as I'd say, if I still have time to do something, uh, I'd say goes invisible. Um, the person with the uh military ready guy is like near the door, right? Like, has he passed us already? They're both at the door, I'd say. Oh, they're at both point. at the door, okay. Yes, um, then Atende uh gives as a uh, little invisible pat on the back as they sort of lift up a little bit and they say um oh don't do that the ritual is starting we do not have to be seen but the ritual mm. oh and uh anthony is saying that to get their attention uh and um for him i mean i'm still hungry but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do the military people do anything? Do they hear that? <laughs> well, you're trying to convince them away from an obvious threat to a slightly more metaphysical one. So I'm going to get you to roll manipulation and persuasion. Okay. Do you have it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> because this feels like you're doing a bit of a lie. A bit I of a dangerous that. lie. And in that case, you need to I mean, roll for that. Can I do performance? <laughs> That's right. No, I doubt, I, doubt, I doubt it. That's right. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, manipulation? Yes, indeed. 
Uh, okay. And remember your hunger dice, which mm -hmm. I believe is only one at this point. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, I got three successes. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Well, this is going to be a pose. I'm going to roll on that. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I have okay. so little dice. <laughs> so the military guy doesn't even react. Too focused. The other person, whose pool is quite a bit smaller than looks back at you and you're gonna are you still holding adze um it's more i have two hands of something invisible than like actively <laughs> wrapping around that <laughs> yeah so they saw you holding someone before and now you're holding an absence of a person and they go what the fuck and that's gonna get the attention of the other person uh... at this point mm -hmm. So, I want you to both think about what you're going to do in this moment, <laughs> uh -huh. and we're going to go back to the other scene. And when I come yeah. back to you, have something ready. So, back to the other combat moment. Morgan, mm. what are you going to do? Well, there's, um, I've sufficiently got everyone's attention. Yes, uh, And so for the next person is... I don't, Morgan is even like directing these shadows. She is still walking forward and the shadows are moving on their own. Uh, it's just going to be this massive shadow that just slams down on this nearby person. Okay. That's horrifying. I uh, mm -hmm. uh, The fact that it's moving independently is scary, terrifying. Uh, okay. Is it going, do you have to make a roll for it to attack? Yes, I will. Okay, and cool. I'm also going to rouse uh, to blood buff. Oh, no. Everybody, I love it. All of you are like, well, I mean, if we're killing them anyways, there's blood to spare. Yeah. And I mean, I rolled a six, so I continue to not be hungry. My beast <laughs> is very satisfied in my actions. Oh, yeah. Um, and I believe with my generation, if you think I add three dice. Yep. This is going to be gross. This is going to be gross, everybody. Yay. Okay. So these people nice. as this oh, oh no. Like eight dice. Gross. Oh no. Oh that's that's not nearly enough. Oh no. <laughs> so I'm going to spend a willpower to reroll some of these dice. Dang. Smart. <laughs> that's... It'd be really funny yeah. if it just the shadow dropped down onto a person with all of the impact Much of better. like a pillow. <laughs> um, and that is going to be uh, four successes. Okay. Uh, uh, what do you roll for damage for this horrible um, thing? For arms of Aramon, uh, uh, and deal superficial damage or grapple added up to um half the potent uh, user's potency rating as a damage bonus with prowess adding onto that. Um, so I think it's whatever I get above there, uh, whatever they use to defend if they're defending. Yeah. So you, this narrate for me as it drops down, how, like, is it just like collapsing upon this thing? Like, or is it dropping down on like an animal? What does it look like in this moment? Give us that description. It is like a bunch of these smaller shadows coalesce into this giant hand that just slams down onto this person. Okay, so as this happens, as it slams down, this person, their body bounces against the ground, and that description sounds gentle compared to the sound of cracking that is audible in the hallway from that impact. They're left on the ground, gasping, limbs slightly twitching as they seem unable to move. Police, you are next to these hunters currently, correct? Yeah, more than likely. Okay. Would you like to do something before they... Um, I, I imagine that for Khalees, it's like... Um... When they smash onto the ground, if there was any viscera that came out from that, it 
splat it splash zone i'm imagining i'm imagining being in the splash zone for Khalees, and Khalees is going to like slowly wipe the blood off of their face make and just wet like this you know wet sound and keeps moving forward can you this is just as a little bonus for that because i like that description can you roll an intimidate roll for me I hmm, I did give myself one dot in intimidation. Uh, I'm going to see if if I use my wits intimidation, I'm like part intimidating, part bluffing. Mm. You know, like I'm trying to see if if the soldiers know what I'm thinking. Okay. And be and if they don't know what I'm thinking, maybe they'll be scared enough to not shoot me. You know what I mean? Totally. That kind of that kind of energy. Yeah. That's what I would like to try and rationalize there. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Let's see. That's one, two, three. That's my highest attribute. That's why I had to <laughs> finagle it. And how uh, much hunger do I have? Oh, I have three hunger. That's crazy. Yeah. I don't know how that happened. Yeah. Gee, I fucking wonder. I don't know how that happened. That was that was a mystery to Who me. There? The mystery to everyone. <laughs> You're not even a vampire. Who would what? Huh? Uh, heck. I just need a burger. Uh, <laughs> that's two successes. Um, no zeros, no nothing. I'm 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 still very even if it doesn't work out. I'm still chill. Don't worry. No worries. So I'm gonna do three rolls. This group of people. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. So, and this is where you guys notice the disparity, or maybe just Khalees does, because, like, most of this group, the three that are remaining, two of them noticeably, like, kind of take a step back from you when you do that and, like, falter the other remaining one at that point drops their gun that they've that they've pulled and pulls out what looks like an well hey you're you're uh not a spring chicken you've seen how they used to make swords and he pulls out what honest to god is a broadsword and just immediately holds it and there's this flash in your mind you've existed long enough as a vampire to see this fire in someone's eyes before and then i'm going to roll an attack okay It's times like this that I wish I had celerity to help you. <laughs> We're going to cut from this for a moment. We'll cut back in a moment, in a second, to Adze and Ayotunde. This person has turned towards you holding this MP5. What do you do? Um, I have a really fun move called Mask of Isolation, um, where I kind of like uh where did i write it down because i really need a trimmer uh, i can turn somebody into a nondescript stranger um that is expected to be in the area so they're kind of like perceived not as who they are from the outside i just want to mess with their brain because like i'm just trying to stay invisible which i can't when i do this but um it's fine ayotande will be in front of me okay cool uh <laughs> so does this cost uh do you need to rouse the blood to do this power i think so Okay, roll them dice then. Roll that die. Please got this. Six, yes. Okay, cool. So you do this, and as this happens, your blood doesn't make further demands of you. Thank you. 
but as this hits this person as their mind is invaded they're aiming this mp5 at you and normally this wouldn't be especially if a person isn't looking at themselves this wouldn't necessarily do much but in this instance where they're aiming a gun at you they look at their hands mm. and they don't recognize their own hands and I'm going to do I'm going to do a willpower test for them to see if they hold on to their gun. Okay. They do not. <laughs> this person doesn't recognize their hands and recoils. They're just <laughs> and their friend like turns no and doesn't recognize them, starts freaking out. Ayutande, is that is happening? What are you doing? It's my time. <laughs> um the second that happens um and they will um rush forward as if in their mind this was coordinated this was planned all along um they will rush forward they want to grab the gun <laughs> immediately that's the first thing they want to aim for um and they're not going to use it to shoot they're just going to like <laughs> they're going to grab this gun and then try and kick them <laughs> <laughs> drop kick this person you could use it as a melee weapon if you got points of melee i mean live your best yep. kicking life though <laughs> just slamming in a face with an mp5 you know i could and that would be a smart thing to do if aotunde was somebody who <laughs> we would do things in a not roundabout way um so literally just like they, the plan is to run up grab this and essentially drop kick the military person while they're freaking out so you're like scrambling on the floor like sliding grabbing the gun and kicking okay. yeah so i'm gonna get i'm i would say that counts as an unarmed uh so that would be uh brawl that's gonna be brawl okay. and a physical skill so uh, I think you could make you could make an argument for strength or dexterity, whichever one you want to do. I would um, love strength. Okay. okay. Um, and what's that thing where you can like buffer blood? Is that like a thing? Is that can you only do that? For, mm. Can I do that? Yep, you can do that. <laughs> I want to. You're gonna need to, need to do a, a rouse check for me, right? Okay. Or, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I succeed. Okay. Well, there you go. Okay, and so, so you get three has... dice at your generation. Yep. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Taking math. Okay. <laughs> one, two, three, it's that five. thing where we all kind of, you know, we play games with math rocks. We do math on the regular, but we all are terrible at math. Right. Yep. <laughs> uh, six successes. Six. <laughs> okay. So this person. This person is having a what could only be described as a dysmorphic attack. And in this instance where they're bewildered, their friend is bewildered, neither of them notice until it's too late that you, Ayutande, just slides and kicks and your foot slams into this guy's chest. Now he's wearing body armor, which is good if you're being shot. <laughs> um, if you're not being shot, uh, it doesn't good. really do much. So you slam this guy with your leg and he hits the wall and just like oh, and falls over. And I'm going to roll stamina for him to see if something unfortunate if something unfortunate happens. He, <laughs> this dude just starts retching. Like he's he's done. He's He's not unconscious. He's not dead. This guy's having a bad time. Uh, his friend is going to try and scramble for something. But at this point, we go back to the other scene. And before we go to what Morgan is doing, we go to this guy's attack, where he attacks Khalees, has the sword, moves to swing, and now Khalees. Your character is, again, old enough to recognize this style of sword, old enough to recognize the zeal in this person's eyes. But I imagine, and you tell me if I'm wrong, that you're also old enough to remember how they fought with swords like this. And so as this man steps forward as if from a medieval combat manual to do it, you just move 
And this guy goes past you and just oh, fully oversteps with his swing, just completely misses you. Um, to an outside observer, this just makes you look more terrifying. <laughs> Do you want to say anything before we go to Morgan as you sidestep this zealous, this zealot that has attacked you? Uh, Khalees is going to keep moving forward, but will say uh, offhandedly, because now I think at this point, Khalees is ahead of Morgan. Mm. We'll say, that one needs an ass kicking real good. And keep going. Yeah, nice. Uh, as you, by about, I'd say, in about two rounds, you will be at the door. At which point I'm going to get you to do some tests to see if you can unblock the door if you're trying to do that to leave in a hurry. Um, hope you have some strength or have some beefy friends coming to help you. Um, <laughs> beefy friends is not a sentence I thought I would say in this <laughs> game, but I did, so the I'm best. sorry. Uh, Morgan! How you, far away from me is the person with the sword? Between you and Khalees now. Mm -hmm. More uh, than five feet? More than less than ten? No. Okay. I'd say like five feet. Five feet? Yeah. Okay. So because I was like, I was like, are they soaring leap distance away? Because you know, we gotta step it up. Yeah, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, and as I'm storing leap, I want to, because they have their back to me currently. Yes, currently. I'm going to pull up my knife as I'm storing leap and attempt to just bury it in their back. Okay. Uh, yeah, do that roll for me. <laughs> You're going to need, yeah, okay. So uh, two successes, and you'll 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 nail this. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So uh, is that. Uh, to to hit him with the knife is that dexterity melee strength melee, uh, whichever is better for you. Honestly, it's considering you did melee. you did the build of soaring leap like that mm. would, I could see the justification for dexterity. Cool. Oh, for reference for everybody, if you haven't gathered it already, you can argue with me about whatever stats you want to put to things. <laughs> if you give me a good enough argument. We're in. Yeah. I'm here to cheer y'all on, not to just enforce boring stuff. Keep it going. So, uh, that is six successes with a critic with a critical. Oh my god! Okay, so you slam down on this guy and just knife biting in and funny thing and you only realize this once the knife buries into this guy's back this guy under his clothes was legit wearing a breastplate and your knife goes around it like it you didn't even know it was there and it just goes right in between just right in and um there's a brief, like, there's a very gross sucking noise as that knife goes into him, clearly uh, puncturing a lung of some sort. Uh, I'm going to now roll for this person. Is your attempt to, is, are you going to, like, you're not trying to initiate a grapple, so I'm assuming after you no. stab that in, you've pulled that. Cool. Stab it in, pull it out, do the thing where I just wipe off the knife. As a way to intimidate everyone else, is I just did that. <laughs> okay. Um, all righty. So this guy is going to do that. Oh, I have to roll more dice. Oops, sorry. <laughs> so he's not rolling so well so far. Mm. Uh, but that's fine. Okay, so he got three successes. Mm. Um, so. Basically, okay, that adds from this. Sorry, just quickly reading something. Okay, so this guy pulls away and just does a wild swing. This mm -hmm. doesn't hit you. It 
it hits you in the way that you lose some hair, but it doesn't hit you. Mm. And he stumbles forward, gasping. Um, he starts like just letting loose a tirade, um, just yelling at the other hunters to get off their asses, a number of whom have like the other two that Khalees scared have run into one of the adjacent rooms and have shut the door. Um, we're going to pull from this for a moment, unless you want to say a line, Morgan. No, Morgan isn't the, the one that says things. She looks at everybody else with just that cold, dead stare. Nice. So as we pull from this, we go back to Adze and Ayatunde. In this moment where this one person's just having a bad day, uh, the other person is panicking. Um, if either of you have some hunger, uh, you have an opportunity here. I will say that. Oh, what does that mean? <laughs> well, blood stored in the human body. <laughs> in these uh, human bodies are what commonly... You know, we commonly call juice bags. Oh, uh, fabulous. Yeah, juice boxes. You know, juice boxes, yeah. Grab I mean, yourself a Capri Sun. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do I have to roll? Uh, My hunger so, dice? So it depends on who you're attacking. Uh, like who you'd be doing this to. The person who is currently retching and not having a good time is not going to be able to resist you in this moment. So I'm not going to get you to roll. If you go for, I will have the other person roll. Uh, but we, there are some rules for drinking, and I will bring those up. Drinking rules. You know it's a good system when there's <laughs> rules for drinking a person. Exactly. <laughs> okay, here we go. So. We are going to... Okay, and what's your hunger at this point? Three. Three. Cool. So you're invisible at this point. Do you, how do you go about this? How do you want to go about it? Uh, I mean, I am, what was it called? Uh, the sleepy one, the Sandman kind of vibes. Like, I love it when they're just like, oh God, I don't want to, I'm not going to say the sentence. Um yeah the one that's not doing a whole lot of resistance is uh my vibe because i like to be creepy and sneaky and just like like a mosquito just okay. you know stab that hole to acquire the capri sweetness okay now <laughs> <The free blood. laughs> to, to uh remind everybody mm -hmm. because what's your predator type uh sandman this person is not sleeping oh so uh <laughs> <laughs> somebody in chat just put this is the real reason why they invented metal straws and thank that's you, beautiful thank you steve um so you are feeding against your predator type can anybody <laughs> remind us what that means everybody here I am currently looking it up. I will get it up. Thank you very much. Just Google the words, but oh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm looking for. This yeah, would be uh, this would be prey exclusion, right? Yes, it would be. Okay. Uh, you refuse to hunt certain class of prey. If you feed on such prey, you gain stains as though you <sighs> have violated a chronicle tenant. Oh my God. Okay. Um, witnessing <laughs> other kindred feeding on the object of your exclusion without interfering might also give stains at the storyteller discretion. That's heavy. I like it. Yes, indeed. Oh, no. All right. Um, so as Adze bites down on this person, and is your intent to fill up? to fit like make yourself no longer hungry i think i wasn't at first um but as i'm drinking yeah yeah okay so the grief hugs at a part of what remains of a soul mm -hmm. and you it's like 
finding what like a spring of water after days of dehydration just you can't stop yourself in this moment it's not even the beast speaking to you this That's there the is part. a genuine fear in this moment that this isn't the beast this is who you are mm -hmm. and that makes me sick to my stomach yeah um, in that instance, as that happens, Ayutande, you're seeing this happen. Adze is sobbing while feeding on this person who's very much dying. Um, what do you do? Or we shift back for one final time. I think Ayutande watches this happen um, and just sort of stares for a moment just in respect of the moment and in shared grief of the moment, they just sort of watch. And then very slowly they turn to the person that was still standing. Um, and they look at them and they give the look of a predator to a cornered prey. You're intruding. And they're going to go and try and Choke on the death. <laughs> okay. So that is going to be brawl. That's going to be brawl. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, I'm going to do the blood thing again. <laughs> oh, wait, can I only do that once during a thing? Or we. you... Uh, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can rouse the blood as much as you have hunger, baby. Yes, yes, Oof. yes. I would like to. <laughs> do it. I'm well, gonna do, do it. Do I succeeded. <laughs> right, I, mean, there, there, I mean, I will say there are consequences as you get higher in hunger, uh, but that's that's a problem for future us. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Um, Three. No, okay. Okay. Wow, that was not. Oh wow. <laughs> Got okay. This. Hold on. Uh oh. What happens? Okay. Okay. What happens if I get a ten on the hunger die again? Uh, okay. Okay. So, so, would you like to explain what happens in this moment, or would you like me to take the reins? I have. I can. I got this. I can make <laughs> this worse. <laughs> Because in this moment, it's the beast that spurs you onward into further success. It's that thing behind Ayotande's eyes. So feel free to describe. Bearing in mind, don't get too gory. I know, I forgot, forgot. <laughs> um, Ayotande, ever smiling and ever pleasant, um, adaptable to every situation, seemingly makes themselves the prey almost so that they can be just a little slippery. They make things just a bit more entertaining. They look at this person cowering in front of them and a part of them sees themselves at a moment in time when they were cowering, when they were the prey. And they feel everything. They feel like they see every moment every being every spirit that's ever been there that's ever haunted them that's ever been with them is in this room is in this moment and is on their shoulders and is pushing them forward and it's with every step that it gets heavier and heavier and more rugged but almost scary and how it seems they're used to this and how They've done this before. Okay. As and, you. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> no, nope, happy. You. Yeah, I didn't really do it. No, it's okay. It's okay. Um, and in their mind, there is this shadow of a person that essentially hovers over them. That, as in the same vein that Ayotunde is about to wrap their hands around this person's neck, they are doing the same to Ay Ayotunde. And they. In Aetonia's mind, the one statement they keep hearing is 
Good job. You did the same to me. And then they do it and they do not stop. So this person lost in fear, the last expression they have is one of absolute sorrow. They start sobbing as you're choking them and eventually the light leaves their eyes and they go limp. And if you release them, they fall. No longer a person, just a broken thing on the ground. Ayatende never stops smiling and they go over to be beside Adsy as they're sobbing. Yeah. And they just hug them as they did a few moments before. Okay. We're going to jump to the other part of the hallway. I'm just going to say as a little aside, that was incredible RP. Well done, incredible. both of you. Damn. I have written so much in my <laughs> notes about this. <laughs> so it's at this point. There's no point. At this point, it's safe to say you manage to massacre these mooks. The people left in that room. Does Morgan go after the people that have barricaded themselves in? I don't think so. If they don't come out for once, she can pretend that they don't exist. Okay. She can tell herself, you know, just going through a barricade to get to them and they dredge up bad memories. Hmm. She doesn't want to be that much of a monster. That makes sense. Police, you're at the doorway. You're about to start moving things. When you hear to the right, and you notice just to the right of the door, a little ways down, because there's a little side hallway, is the elevator. The door opens. Nothing walks out. And all of you hear that ding as well. Mm -hmm. um, Adze and Ayotunde at this point, if you've come out of the room, if you haven't, you'd still hear a little bit of an echo of that of how silent it is in here. Do this and, you know, just wipe the knife off and put it back in its holster, being like a look at everyone else, feeling I have to keep going up. It's not over yet. Finish the ritual. Yes. And Morgan is just going to start walking towards the elevator. Okay. If it, if the Lasombra Bane takes over and this elevator goes for a, a plunge, <laughs> so be it. Okay. Does anybody else follow? I don't like elevators. They're worse than witchcraft. That, whatever's worse than that. Mm. Oh gosh, but I'm also in a deep state of distress. Um, I would say Ayotunde, unless you would have moved away from it, Ayotunde is probably still like holding your hand because you seem so distraught. And they will start leading you to the elevator um, if you don't like pull away. And very quietly they'll say, um, if you close your eyes, you can pretend it's a cloud. We have never stepped upon a cloud. But we will close our eyes. And um, I think with Ayotande leading, that they feel at least like if they plunge to their death in this mysterious technological box, it won't be alone. Hmm. And Khalees? Uh, 
uh, Khalees will um, will hold their finger up for a second um, and go into the side closet uh, to take care of my loose ends there. Um, and then uh, oh. go go back into the elevator. So <laughs> if nobody goes to look, you hear the sounds that follow. But Khalees exits. I'm assuming, do you somehow stay clean or do you come out a little bloodied from that? No, whatever, whatever Gore managed to get on me is still on me. Um, maybe there might be more. I guess it depends on how indulgent we want to say Morgan's kill room was. Um, Rather. <laughs> so top to bottom, Khalees is dirty. Top to bottom, Morgan is clean. Okay. Well, it's also why Morgan wears black. You can't see the blood on black clothes. If anyone was hungry before before this point, mm -hmm. if you can if you can have drank, Consider yourself no longer hungry. I was going to ask if Broadsword Guy has a, had a residence, because if he did, because I have Bloodhound. If yes. he did, I was going to take a snack. Oh, yeah? I was going to take enough. Like, I'm at Hunger 1, but, like, you know, like, a one Hunger dot Zero is so much better, though. Yeah, I mean, he was going anyways. <laughs> so I would have so taken much. him the rest of the way out to, you know, get to Hunger Zero <laughs> and uh, get that resonance. Okay, yeah, no, definitely. You can do that. Um, I will say it is very lucky that not, well, not even luck. Uh, I was hoping one of you would try and feed on him uh, while he was still up. Because if you had, that would have gone very poorly for you. Um, Why? For those that are unaware, uh, some people have a thing called true faith. And when <laughs> vampires try to drink from them, instead you get aggravated damage. <laughs> True faith, all right. Yeah. yeah. All the all the cool background in the world could not prepare him for this. <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm. You got to have that NPC that was way too prepared and just wasn't. <laughs> so, as you. Rem first off, remind me again what it what it is to absorb a resonance, Morgan. I mean, for Morgan, it's this this feeling of depends on I guess what resonance he had, but the taking that spark kind of reminds her of those final moments before hers was taken. So, you remember being next to the lake. You remember how still the water looked at the end of the night. How you kept expecting to die. But you didn't. Something pushed you onwards. That same thing that just made what happened, happened. And if you continue into the elevator, as you stand amongst the other predators in your group, it might trouble Morgan to realize that this is the first time you've been around others who moved as you did through the world. Yeah, there's... Her face is a mask of conflict. It's scowling and looking down at the ground and just... If Morgan wants tonight over, she wants to be done with, and she wants August dead. As the elevator doors close, as you stand there, some sullied with blood, others perfectly clean, 
The blood, it's a known fact that the blood clings to you in its own ways. But in this moment where those doors close and you see your reflection in the doorway, some of you, you realize you don't recognize yourselves. Not in the sense of these aren't your bodies, but for the briefest moment, you see a sign of what's to come. The elevator begins to climb. At first you think it's gonna let you off a couple floors, but then you realize after it passes the 10th floor, you know exactly where it's going. The door reaches the top. 13 dings. And that's where we're gonna end the session for today. Mm, that oh. ominous thing. Yeah. Oh, we my. will uh we will be back with the final episode uh in not too long, at which point our intrepid friends uh who totally just did nonviolent things, didn't let anybody come to harm, and are you know, they're not to blame. It's fine. Um will the grief. beast did it. Yeah, they will greet the end as it comes to them. But before we get there and before we fully wrap up the night, we're going to go down the line of reverses. Maybe everybody's kind of shuffled around. I can't remember which order I did already. So I'm just going to go through. When I call your name, say who you are, where you're going to be next, and how they can find you. So we're going to start with Aubrey. Hello, I am Aubrey. You can find me everywhere on the internet. I'm acting cosplay. I played Morgan, the final girl, La Sombra. Uh, and uh, you find me Twitter, all that stuff, Macqueen Cosplay. And uh, I am the GM of Goblets and Gates, Pathfinder, all that fun stuff. Uh, we've got some cool stuff going on that may not be Pathfinder related currently. Um, we're playing some uh, other games for a little bit uh, by the time you're listening or watching this. So uh, go check that out. Uh, and I have a million other things that I have a lot. Of, I do a lot. Check out all of the li my links to everything that I do on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> and B. <laughs> so relatable. Heck. Uh, sup, y'all? I have been Adze, um, they, them, but I'm normally B Zelda, they, them. You can find me on any social media space as B Zelda underscore. I am a teacher, PG performer, a podcaster. You can find me on Anime Attaché, Windsor Small Talk, and so many others. Um, right now, if you want to play a tabletop game that I could recommend, I would toss you to a game called Paris Gondo, where you can like marry Kondo your inventory. Or if you want to play a video game check out pico it is a cat tea making simulator where you make tea for cats it's coming out soon on steam hell yeah jesse hi i'm jesse i play calice uh you can find me on the himbo gamer at uh on twitter but you can find me mostly on jackal and hair wherever you can google it and we are doing some Twitch streaming where we're playing an alternate universe of a previously competed campaign in a Things from the ta Tales from the Loop, Things from the Flood game. There you go. <laughs> Bit of a mouthful. Uh, Danny. Hi, I'm Danny, or Danny's Quarter, and today I've been playing our Sunshine, but apparently not so Sunshine, Sunshine, Ayotunde. Um, pronouns, uh, they, them, but my pronouns are she, they. You can find me on Twitter at Animated Pizza and or you else at some iteration of Danny's Corner. Um, I also have a Ko-Fi, so if you want to commission me for art, you can go to my Ko-Fi.com slash Danny's Corner. Or you can watch me on Neon Lights Roleplays every other Wednesday on Stardust Ghosts um uh let's see that's about oh uh, uh you <laughs> i'm also an admin for hearth guild and we have a big event coming up we have a panel at Kineticon in july so make sure to follow our twitter for updates on that and yep thank you so much have a good day Woo! and i am petra skelton and i am routinely impressed by this crew everybody here is incredible uh, especially when i forget rules because i'm living that bimbo life you can find me at pre-apocalypse on pretty much everywhere. Um, I also have a Kofi. I have it. I have an itch account. 
I my latest uh, I'm doing a series of zines called the archetype zines where I do a fictionalized take on a different class of D and D. Uh, next one up is the cleric, and it's going to be a really fun one. Then after that is warlock. In the AP space, you can find me here. You can find me on Dice Cream Sandwich, where I'm going to be in the uh, I don't know what the name is, but a post-apocalyptic D and D game. It's going to be really really fun. Um, you can find me. You're going to find me in the Exquisite Corpse Pride uh, event, where I'm going to be storytelling a game. And I have an upcoming Avatar Legends in Studio AP that's coming up with costumes, sets, everything. It's going to be ridiculous. We'll uh, we'll see what happens. I'm consistently uh, blessed by these opportunities. So thank you for tuning in. We will see you again next time. Thank you for showing up for us. Bye!